the college football experience, Northern Illinois Huskies 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, presented by WinBet. Bet fifty dollars at WinBet, get two hundred dollars in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN, and they're offering 70% off if you go to IPVanish.com slash SGP. That's IPVanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, make sure to check out our new Discord server. It is the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. This is Brian Bosworth, aka the Boz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Peace out. Boz out. Yes, yes, yes. Woo! Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. Northern Illinois Huskies 2022 season preview. My name is Kobe Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Dundee. That's not a pick, this is a pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and. Um... I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, you know, this is one of my favorite teams in all of college football. I've been rooting for them for a long time. Patty C <laughs> subscribe on YouTube to the college football experience or wherever you listen to podcast at. Remember also to subscribe to the college basketball experience because we talk Husky football. We talk Husky basketball. And we even talk college baseball too. Hey, I don't, I don't know how good they've been lately. Um, but subscribe to the college baseball experience because we'll hop in over there too. But uh, uh, check out, check us all out. Sports gambling podcast, all that good stuff. I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former, former JMU Duke defensive back, the burrito eating side lad kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing. Patty C in the place to be. Hi. Well. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something special about the Cobb, Illinois. It's on my it's on my list of of uh, you know, college special games college I want to go to. Husky Stadium, I believe you rank number 1 in terms of your Mac stadium. Yes, they have the best fans in the Mac. All right. Bold it's statement. a very Boise Bold state style statement. feel. I've driven past the Cobb uh, and Patty C this is a rich program. All right. Since I can recall when they first came up in the FBS uh, you know, Joe Novak, great coach in my opinion, because coming into a situation, they're jumping from the big West to the, to the independence uh, back in 1996, had to go one in 10 and no in 11 his first two years. And then boom, he got this thing going um, as they look, let me just rattle off. <laughs> wait, wait, Hype wait, them up a little bit. Wait, wait, Get wait, the wait, fans wait. What excited is going on here about Northern Illinois football. They should be excited because this program kicks ass. All right. This is the Northern Illinois Huskies. I mean, who was it? Was it Jordan Lynch? Was that the quarterback's that's, that's name? The that one. was just a stud. You go back to the days. I mean, who was that uh, PJ Fleck? Play wide out for them. Oh, Caught man. a game winning touchdown against the Maryland Terrapins. Oh, yeah. Patty C, you want to talk down about this team? <laughs> oh, they've scored multiple wins over what? Oh. UCF, South Florida, UNLV. That's just in the uh, a tier above the Mac. But how about this? Wins since this is all since 2000, by the way. Wins against Wake Forest, Maryland, Alabama in Tuscaloosa, wow. Iowa State, Purdue, Minnesota. Fresno State, Temple, Kansas, Iowa, Purdue twice, Northwestern, Nebraska, and BYU. And you disrespect them. You disrespect them. <laughs> All right? Bring it on. They also, check this out. Adding into that over the past 20 years, five point loss at Illinois, 
three point loss at at Wisconsin, seven point loss in Ames, one point loss at Northwestern, uh, ten point loss at Iowa, four point loss at Minnesota, eight point loss at Wisconsin, six point loss at Illinois, three point loss at Kansas when they were good. One point loss at Iowa, three point loss to BC, seven point loss at the Horseshoe taking on Ohio State, three point loss to BC, and an eleven point loss in Salt Lake City. This program, even when they lose, they show up competitive. No, I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying it's been a pretty recent development that they've hit like the next level of of their program. I, I, I would argue that late. Late uh, late nineties, what early two thousands? They had this thing going. I know it's just one and one ten and two season and nine and three season, but they scheduled bananas at a conference, so they were killing it in the max. Still, I feel like all righty. But this program is coat. It's a good. Another thing is they hire wisely from from Joe Novak to Jerry Kill to Dave Doran to Rod Carey. All of those guys what got promoted. Carey didn't work out at Temple, but hey, Thomas Hammock. Uh, is now the guy. And by the way, Thomas Hammock, Michael Burner Turner. How about him? There um, you go. Hammock was a running back, I believe, for NIU. There you go, yeah. running back. You. He went to the. He played in the NFL, right? Um, uh, did Hammock? If so, I I don't know if he played. He definitely coached, but he he was definitely a running back at NIU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This program last year, Patty C. You know, it's it, where where's my line here? Because uh, I feel like it's safe to say it's easy to see a tide turn. <laughs> well, it was real easy with them. Yeah, and they started out by beating the your ACC team, Georgia Tech. <laughs> Didn't Georgia Tech like beat Florida State or something? And you I think so? You hype up Florida State to win the national championship every year. Um, Jeez, just coming at me all episode. Only here. a six point loss to Coastal Carolina in the Cure Bowl. All right. Um, I mean, they only really got smacked once, and that was Michigan. All right. They did get smacked. And uh, all the other performances: seven point loss to Wyoming. Five point loss to Kent State. Now they did get smacked by Western Michigan also. But uh so here's did the Pitt. thing. This team right. went nine and five, and I'm pretty sure got outscored last season. Eight <laughs> regular season wins by a total. <laughs> this is this is their the, I have been comparing them to Michigan State well, all offseason. Whooped, they whooped Maine. So but uh, even with, that was kind of close in the third quarter. They pulled away late. Uh they won eight games by a total of twenty six points. Interesting. That's, That's pretty wild. Seems almost impossible. That's pretty right? wild. Um, but t- he, they they turned that corner. They won the Mac. You so, got to give it up for them. They won the Mac. <laughs> they did. How many one point wins? Did they <laughs> it, was a, it was three a one amount. point wins, a two point win, and an <laughs> overtime win. Uh, hey, you play to win the game. You know, right? you know who their uh, biggest nil contract should be with. Who's that? Uh, that's the kicker. What's his name? Uh, Joe. Uh, no, John Richardson. That guy, twenty-two of twenty-seven field goals last year for him. Clutch. He had to Hello? be the difference. You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. You don't just play to just play it, Patty. That's C. right. If I'm Thomas Hammock, I have John Richardson over my house three nights a week. I'm grilling him up steaks. Yeah, hey, buddy, just keep kicking the ball like that. You're getting <laughs> me paid, buddy. Uh, do, but this is a, a team and, and and I'll be honest with 18 starters returning. I'm going to dive into that, but a lot of people think they can win the Mac again. Well, can, can they be that like, see, can they just be a better version of the team? They were last year, last year, clearly they were good, but they also had a lot of luck. Sure. And I think that's the question you got to ask yourself. It's a little, I compared them to Michigan state as the two luckiest teams in college football <laughs> last year, but the difference is Michigan state lost a ton and Rocky Lombardi had transferred in from Michigan state. <laughs> so right. something about it's his Lombardi effect, luck, right. something about his Lombardi luck being related to the great Vince Lombardi. Um, Patty C what, what do you make of it? What do you make of uh, their chances before I dive in? You, you think this team can, can, can do it again? Well, I had assumed based on them going Oh, and six during the COVID year, which obviously you kind of take with a grain of salt, but uh, what did they have done? Um, five and seven the year before that was respectable, but not great. I thought after 2020, I was like, okay, this program is going in the wrong direction. He obviously rebounded last year. A lot of luck. Like you said, Um, Hey, better to be lucky than be good. Right. Then to be bad. That's for (laughs) sure. Um, And um, yeah, I don't know the, the, the preseason publications I'm looking at 
seem to say that a lot of the talent's coming back and a lot of it projects to be like at the all conference level. So is Tom McHammock the right man for the job? Well, I love the guy. I love him too, man. You gotta, you gotta give it's it up to Tom fat Albert yeah. <laughs> coaching on the sideline. He's not that fat. He's not fat Albert fat, but he's portly. He's rotund and you know, I love a rotund coach. So <laughs> Yeah, if you look back at last year, just so many close calls, beating Georgia Tech by one in Atlanta at Bobby Dodd. Uh, they did take care of the Black Bears, but that I'm telling you, I think that was like 21 to 14, like heading into the th- late third or something. Um, uh, Eastern Michigan, they won by seven. Toledo, they won by two. Bowling Green, they won by eight. Central Michigan, they won by one. Ball State, they won by one. Buffalo, they won an overtime by six. I mean, can they, can they not, tell me the max, not just a bundle of fun. <laughs> when you see all those games, that's, what's so great about the Mac is you're going to have all these games that are, literally one play is the difference. You're right. They were only up by 10 in the uh, start of the fourth quarter against uh, yeah, Maine. That's what I'm saying. That was a ball. I remember watching it. It was a ball game. They were pretty petty. C. they were projected to finish in last place in the West last year. So Thomas hammock just flushed the toilet on the media. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but let's uh, let's hop into it. Um, offensive, like I said, nine starters back on offense. Eric, how do I pronounce this guy's name? Uh, which one? Idness. Oh, the offensive Idness. coordinator. I Idness. He's the OC. Shout out to him because I think he's doing a hell of a good job. Thirty-six in the nation in scoring offense. Fourth in rush offense. Thomas Hammock. You know, uh, back when I first started watching Thomas Hammock, he, he was a running back. So you know, damn well, he's going to run the rock, which is something I can appreciate in this current, of course, 2022 age of, of football. <laughs> I wonder where the connection to Idsness was though, because when looking back at his coaching history, he was at South Dakota state since 2010. So it doesn't look like there was a ton of might maybe on a recommendation. Maybe he's at a bu- co- having a cocktail at a bar, and so guys drew up a he drew up a couple nice plays drew on the steam. cocktail napkin. He was like, you know, you're with me. Cocktail napkin, I said. Cocktail. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, look, they were 105th in pass offense. They got to get better then. They probably will with with the return of somebody. 44th in total offense, Patty C. But guess what? They were breaking in a new quarterback last year. Like I said, transferred over from Michigan State. Rocky Lombardi. Yes, he is related to Vince Lombardi. So, I mean, it's hard to fade this guy. <laughs> Let me tell you why it's not that hard to fade him. Uh, his passing percentage during the four years that he had played football before in college 44%, 33%, 53%, and this year, finally up to 58% this past year. That's not great, but. When 15 you, touchdowns, eight interceptions. When you're at Michigan State, they don't protect you. Well, apparently, I mean Tucker's yeah. Tucker's starting that, but under uh, D'Antonio, come on. That's true. He had <laughs> 11 touchdowns, launch air academy, and 14 picks at uh, at um, Michigan State. So and it, and going to 15 versus eight touchdowns and interceptions, vast improvement in one year. You, you look at last year, Patty C. It's not only that. You know, he was. That's a brand new offense. He was learning. I feel like down the stretch, I mean, I guess it's probably just the Kent State game, but can I rattle off what he did against the team that played for the Mac Championship? All right. Yeah. Uh well, in the Mac Championship, they didn't really need to throw the ball. They dominated by running the ball. But the game at Kent, he was thirty three of fifty seven for five hundred thirty two yards, three touchdowns, zero picks. That was his his game log at on yes. a conference championship game. He got a fifth of his numbers. <laughs> what, so rattle that off five hundred. So so uh, they lost in overtime. This is not the, the in the championship game. They just ran the ball and won. Oh, okay, they lost in overtime at Kent State, uh, the team they played in the championship. Later, he was thirty three of fifty seven, five hundred thirty two yards. For three touchdowns, zero interceptions. That's literally one fifth of his touchdowns <laughs> and one fifth of his yards. And I'm single- telling you, it seemed like because you got to remember he was installing a, a brand, it's a brand new offense to him. So so and let me just rattle off the yardage here. Game one, 136 yards, two touchdowns against Georgia Tech. They win. <laughs> yeah. He has 233 yards against Wyoming, just 46 against Michigan. Right. Well. 
take that f- with a grain of salt. Uh, against Maine, two eighty two, right? Okay. Against Eastern Michigan, eighty four. I'm assuming mm. he got dinged up or something. Uh, against Toledo, one fifty four. Against Bowling Green, thirty eight. See, but here's where here's where we need to cue in. Here's where we need to cue in. It's easy to see a tide because turn. Three forty eight at Central Michigan. He had back to back away games. Three forty eight at one of the at both these teams were good in the MAC. Three forty eight followed by five thirty two followed by two sixty four followed by one ninety seven. I I think he got familiar with that offense. Apparently, yeah. Apparently. And, and and watch out, watch out now. Year Be- two could yield much bigger results if he can sustain that over the course of an entire season. And and the run game it kind of took some hits. We'll get to that, but uh, Harrison Whaley is back. He started the final four games of the year and had 456 yards in those starts, getting 4.3 yards a carry. Was he the? Uh, I believe he was the was leading fresh, rusher. Freshman, yeah. Um, wide receiver. Uh, they they got uh, Cole Tucker. He's back. Also, tra- uh, Trayvon Rudolph. Trayvon Rudolph, a walk on Patty C. Second team All Mac. How about that, folks? There you go. All right. Uh, they got Shamar Thornton, who's a senior that's going to be stepping into the starting role. Circle his name; he needs to have a big year. Tight end Miles Joyner is back. Four of five off on the offensive line are back, led by Nolan Potter. Patty Three of those C. dudes on the preseason all conference list. This this offense is going to roll, I think. Potter, try and say the other one, Logan <laughs> Schnurschnitch. <laughs> <laughs> Someone help me with this. Z S C H. Don't do it to yourself. Schnir schnitch. <laughs> okay. And Don't do it to yourself. Marquez Cox also 13 preseason all conference. So that's a damn good offensive line. I think this offense is going to be fine. I think they're actually going to be better. On the defensive side of the ball, Derek Jackson, defense coordinator, 112th in scoring defense, 120th against uh, the rush. That that's not good for business. Yeah. 84th against the pass charting at 115 in total defense. I think they're going to be better. You know why Patty C because nine starters are back on defense. All right. Three or four back on the D line led by defensive tackle, James Esther linebacking core. You would think, okay, you, if you look blindly, if you grab like, I don't know, just go out and grab a, a magazine from the store or something, you'll see one of one of three back in the linebacking core. That's not good. Now they actually have in a way two of three. Yes. They lost two starters from a year ago, but their starter heading into the season, Kyle Pugh, tore an ACL. He's back. Boom. And you mix him with uh, Davern. Dav- uh, how do I pronounce that? Davern. Davern. Davern yeah. Rayner. <laughs> I I don't know how to pronounce these I'm names. Pull up the old right. depth chart here. Um, two linebackers back, and then the entire secondary is back, led by uh, freshman free safety last year, C.J. Brown, who was a beast. Uh, their kicker is back. Patty C. alluded to him. He's a stud. Breaking in a new punter, Patty C. What the hell? I mean, look, I want to fade this team. Trayvon Rudolph, the kick returner, first team uh, preseason all conference. Well, part of me wants to fade this team because of the Michigan State thing. Well, Michigan State's number was seven and a half. Uh, if, if you're watching on YouTube, you could you could see the graphics. Shout out to the SGPN graphics team. But they return way more. Like Michigan State doesn't return that much that that much production. Dude, if you're telling me this team a won the conference last year, b returns most of their talent. See most and of the money kicker in these close yeah. games Has great special teams. Good first team kicker, first team kick returner um, and a transfer punter who I think is supposed to be decent. Yeah. And Mojo baby. They got Thomas hammock, close game. Mojo dude. I'm, I'm optimistic. I am too. I, I fi- mean, I think the tide has turned. There we go. He said it first. It's easy to see a tide turn. Uh, all right, we're going to get to the transfer portal recruiting and what Las Vegas expects from the Huskies in 2022 and what we expect here in the college football experience. But first, I got to get us paid, folks. I got to tell you that the college football experience, Northern Illinois Husky 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network presented by WinBet. Bet $50 at WinBet and get $200 in free bets. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN. They're offering 70% off if you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by Dave. No, I'm not talking about Dave Doran. I'm talking about Dave. All right. 
Look, we've all been at some, you know, some point in life, Patty, see where we've been in a situation where we needed some extra cash and we were tight on cash. Maybe a, I know one time for me, I had two apartments at the same time. Like I, I, I wanted to move to another apartment and, and they told me, okay, but if you, if you wait, it's gone. I'm like, can you wait 30 days? They said no. no. So I had, I had two apartments for one month balling. No, not Paul because the every, <laughs> everything ass, else I was like stressing out of my mind and, <laughs> uh, and I could have really used a little cash and that's where Dave can help. If you're in a situation like that, you're living paycheck to paycheck or struggling to make ends meet, you know, it can be stressful, let alone. I mean, yeah. How about that too? It's like the stress it, it puts on you and, and, and the re- if you're in a relationship or whatever, 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 just, you're just going, you're getting on the train. People say, how are you doing? So don't, don't ask me any questions. You know what I mean? Like you're just, you're just mad at the world a little bit, you know, Dave's so, that friend that's talking you through it. He's going to bail you out of that jam. He's all right. Keeping you your mind in the right place. Dave is the banking app that can help. It lets you get $500 instantly with extra cash. Yeah. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, catch up on bills, whatever you can, you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups and get this. There's no interest. There's no credit check needed. All right. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get their financial relief. So I highly recommend doing this. Download the Dave app from the app store right now. That's D A V E sign up for extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly for terms and conditions. Go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees apply banking provided by evolve member of the FDIC. Oh man, this is just, let me, uh, let me ask you what's this. that? Uh, Chicago bears <laughs> terrible. Apparently considering putting a dome that is disgusting to me. Where do I, do we have a, a drop? Look, there's some things that are sacred about all of our sports about history, right? But identity is what the Chicago bears are about. Like when you think Chicago bears, you think gridiron, hard hitting football, they're like the Green Bay Packers. It's I would compare it to when you think baseball with the New York Yankees. Yeah, it's you like know, it's like Wrigley Field. Yes, or or the Chicago Cubs. Yeah, you you would. It, there's something sacred about the Chicago Bear franchise, and to put them in a dome, maybe it's the history with George Hallis. I don't know, but but it is, I think, criminal. I think it's criminal. I think you should prosecute <laughs> whoever is trying to make that happen because I find it just absolutely disgusting. I think it's one of the worst things I've ever heard in my life. And it, it, I, I lose faith in the future of humanity. I agree. I lose faith in, and, and what, and to me, it's like, we grew up loving the NFL. Like if, in my opinion, this is good. I need to step up and say, no, nah, it's not happening. Yeah, it's not happening, but he's not the guy to do it. You know? Someone needs to step need up and Moose say Johnson yeah. to take over for Roger Goodell. The owners of the NFL like, should fire you can't uh, Roger get rid Goodell of this. and appoint Moose Johnson, the new commish. Because how well he did with the USFL, right? Yes, and how, he'll make he'll, he'll remove domes from NFL. Well, in the Cobb, they don't play in a dome. Thank God. God well, they, bless. They God sh- bless the the great people of Northern Illinois. Agree, right? agree. Now I say this. Now, if the the Big Ten is too too sissy to fucking do it, right? To play the Big Ten championship game in Soldier Field. And maybe we can convince the Mac to the do Mac it. should, they should get out of that, that stupid stadium, that roller rink in Detroit for the Mac championship and move down to, to soldier field or Lambo either, or uh, please, please do that. But Come Patty on. C the transfer portal is such a big deal in, in college football in 2022. Uh, that one of their leading rushers from a year ago, Javon D- Ducker, he had, he, he left Northern Illinois for Memphis. Um, also running back Julius Burden, a oh, uh, Bolden. I'm sorry, not Bol- Burden. Bolden. He left. Mm, mm, mm. Jack Wilty on the offensive line left. Cornerback Dylan Thomas. He <laughs> left. Uh, running back Aaron Collins left. Th- those are all the people that left. All right. It's not too bad. And what they gained was they went out and got a, an athlete from the airport, Florida International, Shamar Thornton. Nice. That is a nice pickup. They got linebacker Isaiah Green May from Wisconsin. They got quarterback Justin Lynch from Temple, and I just wonder if he's somehow related to uh, what's the other Lynch? 
That was him. No, that was or, or, uh, Jordan. Jordan Lynch. There it's his go. brother. Yeah. I'm assuming I was making that assumption. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. They won the portal. <laughs> hey, you're bringing, bringing in, in a legend. Yeah. Come on. That's right. What do you, what do they call that? A legend family. What in like fraternity terms? It's uh Lombardi. A Lombardi. I forget what it's. Called. I use Lombardi for all uh, for all things in life. If I'm if I'm at the deli and they're like, which which cheese do you want? Give me the Lombardi <laughs> cheese. All right, the fucking best one. All right, and that's what they got going with Northern Illinois. Patty, see, talk to me about recruiting rankings. Recruiting this um, has been relatively consistent: 93, 110, 95, 95, and one hundred four over the last five cycles. More importantly, within the conference, they've been. Four eight four five four. Um, their four year composite has slipped, however, which indicates to me that they were doing some better recruiting under Rod Carey, probably like you mentioned pre episode on the heels of what Dave Dorn accomplished. But Rod Carey was able to maintain for a little bit. Um, their four year composite ha- started at 89, has slipped to 105, 104, and 109 within the conference 343. Three, six now. So they're sliding down the conference totem pole in terms of overall talent, but it sounds like they were, uh, well, they just want a Mac it. championship. Don't change what you're doing. Cause you're bringing yeah. home championships That's and right. it's a, sh- a shame on college football for not having a big enough playoff, which yeah. would let the Mac champion in because that, that should happen in the future. How fun would that be? Yeah. Uh, I do think though, with a few more winning seasons, hammock hammock has some recruiting chops. I'm assuming. Yeah, we'll see. I'm buying in. Well, Las Vegas, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, this graphic here, they are projecting six and a half wins, Patty C. Six and a half wins. This team, they won the MAC championship a year ago. What's your first reaction to seeing six and a half? Uh, I would need to see their non conference, is my first reaction, but I think they're going to, I think they're going to hit the over because I think the non conference is pretty manageable. Well, let's uh let's hop into it. I do want to pull up the where the uh the juice is currently at. You know, these things change all the time. Um here we go. So the over's at minus one fifty, the under's at plus one thirty. So so Vegas is leaning to a seven and five season by the by the the Huskies here. And things are gonna get fun Thursday, September first. When the Eastern Illinois Panthers, Tony Romo and and uh, who's that uh, lawn chair quarterback for the uh, for the Niners again? I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Garoppolo. Oh, Garoppolo. They both went to Eastern Illinois with the Panthers. Or as the good folk in Northern Illinois call him Garoppolo, from they, what I understand. Oh, really? That's yeah. Really nice. My old roommate from. Uh, I, I, wait, it, 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 the good old people in Eastern Illinois, you mean? Not well, Northern. Well, well, not Northern Illinois University, yeah, but yeah. he was from uh, my old roommate was from the fuck's that town. Don't start. I I don't know. All right, <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm drawing towns. a blank. Uh, anyway, that's a win. Eastern Illinois was awful for the past like five years. What they do last year? Uh, Na- yeah, they were one in ten last year. Naperville, that's where he was from. They were one in ten, but there was a classic game. We watched this one in Terry Hot Week Week Zero against Indiana State. That was twenty six twenty one. It was a barn burner, but uh, Patty C, that's a win, right? They're just going to wax Eastern Illinois, I would imagine. I would think so. Yeah. Uh, then comes week two for the uh, the Huskies here, and risky game. This is a little bit of a risky game because the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. This is in H A Chapman Stadium. Tulsa's a, oh, an odd team. They 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 they'll lose to U C Davis uh, in, in in the FCS, who's they happen to be a decent FCS, but. Still, they'll lose that, but then they'll like put a scare in Ohio State and in Oklahoma State on the certainly road. in Oklahoma yeah. State. Ohio two State years two. in a row. Yeah, last year. Yeah, last year. Ohio um, uh, what are you doing here? Should we go Tulsa? I feel like is that Tulsa? Yeah, it's I at feel Tulsa. Like, yeah, I'm going Tulsa. Here. Give me Tulsa one and one. Then the Vanderbilt Commodores, SEC, <laughs> SEC. Come to Husky Stadium. Notice how this is probably, I would say, maybe. Maybe you could convince me that Missouri would have the cojones to travel to DeKalb. Vandy and Missouri, probably the only two, because I know Missouri went to Wyoming and took an L. Yeah, I would um, say it's probably a pretty rare thing for, especially at a MAC level school. Dude, Northern Illinois is winning this game. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Two and two and one 
Uh, and then they got another SEC. What are they joining the SEC here? Uh, they're at the Kentucky Wildcats, Kroger Field, Blue Light Special. Uh, shop to your drop customers. I got Kentucky winning that one. Could yeah. that be an upset? Uh, t- Kentucky ten winnings last year in the SEC. I don't think so. Yeah, I think Kentucky gets it done. Two and two throughout the month of September. This is in the, in the middle of a back to back away stretch because they're at Kentucky, followed by going to Muncie, Indiana. <laughs> Will Rocky Lombardi get Muncie out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> Patty C? Uh, Schumann Stadium. I got I got Northern Illinois winning this one, but these games are always Boy, crazy. That's that's a these games up. are wild. Ball man. State six and seven <laughs> last year. <laughs> these game, they they barely lost to him last year. Ball State did. Now yeah. it's in Muncie, but Ball State replacing Drew Plitz no longer there. They've lost some other key pieces. They were a very veteran team a year ago. We were looking at this series, uh, nineteen and twenty all times in favor of Ball State, I believe. So evening things up will be Northern Illinois this year, we believe. Uh, so I got them three and two there. You two? Yes. Then they're home to the Toledo Rockets. Another series we looked at where even though they trail pretty significantly all time, they have won eleven of the last twenty. Yes, and you're seeing the the uh, the turn there in that one, Patty C. I I got Northern Illinois winning this one. Hmm. What what was the score in this one last year? They didn't play. No, did they not? Oh no, they did. Yeah. And Northern Illinois won twenty two to twenty in the Glass Bowl. Now they got to go to Husky Stadium. <sighs> Give me the Huskies. All right, all right, I'll ride with you. Four and two. Sure. Then they go to Eastern Michigan. That's a, that's a straight 50 50 game to me, the Toledo one. I just like their home advantage over a lot of the other Mac schools. Yeah. So, uh, but they, they here that on Saturday, October 15th, they head to Yesplantis <laughs> <laughs> to take on Eastern Michigan. Patty, see, I'm going to have Eastern Michigan upset special. Chris Creighton dialing a, you in to a upset special going on there. You're probably right. Between Ball State, Toledo, and a road trip or two, a road trip to Ball State and Eastern Michigan. They're going to get an L in there somewhere. So that puts us at four and three. Yeah. They are back to back away again. Mm. They are at Ohio Peden stadium, Ohio, only three and nine last year. I'm going to give this one to the, to, uh, to the Huskies, the old Huskies. Yeah. I think I got to agree with you. Uh, they get a bye week to, to prep for central Michigan. That's a huge game. That's an absolutely huge game. Cause I think it's two of the better teams in the Mac. Maction Wednesday. Uh, give me Northern Illinois to get this done. Central Michigan. They won. They won on the road. Man, last we were year. watching that one. Central Michigan uh, should have won that game. They were up a lot of the game. Northern Illinois comes back, takes the lead. Central Michigan drives down, goes to kick the field goal. The holder pulls a Romo. He, the ball. He he couldn't get the oh, ball. Couldn't, up. couldn't yeah. put it down. Yeah. Oh man. So thirty nine thirty eight in favor of Northern Illinois last year. I feel I feel another loss coming. For for them for, for the Huskies for, for the Huskies <laughs> we're giving them a lot of games. I'm taking the Huskies. All right, they travel to Waldo Stadium, Patty C, Kalamazoo. And they took a shellacking at their yeah, hands. I'll take Western Michigan to get this one. Me too. So, so, wow. So what? So what's your record then? I got them with uh, Eastern Illinois, Vandy. Because I got them at six. Ball State, Toledo, six and four right now for me. The, the, I just need one win to hit the over Eastern. I feel like I've got them at five. Yeah. I think you have them at five and five. Yeah. I have them at six and four Wednesday night. This is another team projected to be really good in the Mac this year. The Miami, Ohio red Hawks and Chuck Martin. This is in Husky stadium though. And that's all the advantage I need <laughs> to take Northern Illinois. I think I got to agree with you. I mean, we we were really high on Miami too. Yeah. Are they in different divisions? I'm assuming Miami, Ohio is right. They're in the other side of things. So this could be a, a, a Mac championship preview, but I'm tempted to say Huskies in DeKalb. Uh And then they end the season with the Akron zips one Joe Moorhead. That that's tough. Cause I feel like Moorhead will turn probably have turned a corner from at that point. At that point, so you got to figure there's a there is a disca- decided schematic advantage that the people in the Chicago area are probably aware of. I just think seven and five or eight and four is the reality here. I got to ride the over. I've been on a hot chick riding overs, but don't worry, comes back around. I'm not nearly as high as Colby is, you know, 
an zero and six two years ago, and then last year a bunch of really close wins. That doesn't scream sustainability to me, um, but I do think it just there's enough talent there that it leans like it's going to be the same thing as last year. A lot of close wins, I think. So you're on the over. I think I'm slightly on the over, but I'm I'm not really confident in. Yeah, I'm taking the over with the Huskies. I like it. Obviously, the juice isn't incredible, so uh, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. Take it, take it. Um, I just think that that amount of re- uh, production returning you, with most most of these Mac schools, we haven't seen that. But like, okay, we know Akron bringing in a new coach. Um, I think Bowling Green is returning a ton of production, but even Mar uh, uh, Buffalo with Mar- Maurice Linquist seems like they're not there yet. Um, it, Chris Creighton has some turnover at Eastern Michigan. Toledo, I think, is is in a decent spot to contend. Um, but Western Michigan, a ton of turnover. I think Central Michigan will contend. I think Miami Ohio will contend. But a lot of these teams on the schedule, um, I do think there is a, a decent amount of turnover going on within the MAC. Yeah, you're right. With the, uh, I mean, first three teams of preseason all conference, you have three offensive linemen. Two running backs, a quarterback, and a wide receiver. That's Let's go the whole Huskies. offense. Let's almost. go Huskies. And look, there's no there's no Michigan on the schedule. You know what I mean? I get it. At Kentucky, ten win team, but look, don't let them Kentucky did struggle with Chattanooga last year. Don't let the dogs get hot. The Huskies get hot, Patty C. They, you're right. Their uh their non conference last year had two power fives and a pretty solid school in Wyoming. They who they took an L to. Uh, this year, just one. Well, I guess Vanderbilt is technically a power five, but I would say a considerably yeah. easier route. Yeah. So, the conference. so give me Northern Illinois on the over. Patty C's on the over. Subscribe to the college football experience. Uh, look, we're breaking down all, all 131 FBS teams. Yeah. Last year was 130. This year, 131. Uh, so subscribe to the college football experience. Hopefully you're subscribed on YouTube as well. Um, but I also want to tell you to subscribe to the college basketball experience because we always talk, we always talk Huskies over there. You know, we, we, we're excited to see what Rashawn Burno can do uh, with the Huskies over there. But uh, yeah, subscribe to the college basketball experience, subscribe to the college football experience and me and Noah Beanick with the college baseball experience. And remember, check out the sports gambling podcast. I just had Pat and McAfee on the show. Mike Leach. Check out that Phil Steele. Uh, I, I think is about to hop on a show there. So check out that, check out all that good stuff. They're doing NFL futures. So they're talking Chicago bears. They're talking green Bay Packers. They're talking Detroit lions. They're talking Minnesota Vikings. You're going to want to check out all that good stuff. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, get the uh, check out the Discord channel. We're always talking uh, college ball, well, any sport really. If you you want to know who's going to win the badminton game going on in uh, I don't know Alberta, I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got you covered. Hop in that Discord channel and hang out with us. It's a lot of fun to sort out the bets. You got nothing going on. It's uh, it's just fun. It's just fun. That, that that's the best way to to Man. say it, Patty C. We're rocking over there. Yes, we are rocking. All right, folks, subscribe to the college football experience. This is the college football experience Northern Illinois style. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. <laughs>